Hey friends, thank you for joining me today. I am actually at a shopping center mall in Raleigh. The same, uh, across the street from, the, but part of the same uh, place that I was on Thursday night when I got, or Wednesday night when I got um, blown out by a approaching thunderstorm. And this morning, Saturday morning, I'm doing a picture of the farmer's market. It's going to be really hard to show you what I'm doing. Let me, let me pull you off. And uh, there we go. That's the general view. <laughs> Not a very good rendering of it, of course, but oh, I like the dog. That would be, be good to get the dog in there. So... Hello. Just getting started, as you can see. Take a minute to finish plugging the products. So I did finish uh, Wednesday's painting, the one that I got blown over by, well, almost blown over by 50 mile hour wind. Uh, finished it yesterday. And uh, I so much prefer to finish paintings on location. Okay, bear with me again for just a minute while I finish plugging in all my electricity. If I don't hook up batteries to this stuff, you and I will be parted in a matter of 10, 15 minutes, something like that. <laughs> All right. A little bit of a breeze there. That's nice because it's been quite uh, warm setting up here today. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, as you can see, I'm I'm pretty serious about today again about the umbrella umbrella covering. Uh, It's it's really warm out here. Without the umbrella, so I'd never survive. And I'm doing two live paintings today. Uh, in fact, I discovered this morning over breakfast. I'm doing it two Saturdays in a row where I'm doing two paintings. So. Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of energy layout today, uh, tonight, and I, I'll broadcast if I can. I'm doing a private party, rooftop patio, view of the city. It's a long story, fun story, but that is this evening. For that, as you can see, I'm doing. Farmers Market. This is a weekly occurrence all through the summer here at North Hills Mall. Every Saturday morning, it's a farmer's market. And I've been planning to come down and paint it for <laughs> quite some time. So, better late than never, as they say. Okay, now here's the hard part about this <laughs> painting um, around an umbrella. Yeah, it's real hard to see.
once again, I am just trying to slap down fairly quickly uh, my first guess. I like to emphasize that. That's all it is, is a first guess. Now, yes, of course, there are, there, there are other ways to paint. Uh, use a grid, you know, any, any number of other techniques for capturing, especially capturing a complex subject matter like this. Um, but my preferred method is just, come on man, just take a whack, just, just go for it and uh, see how close you can get and then make adjustments as you go along. Here lately I've had actually pretty good luck. I'm sure it's skill in some respect, but I feel, I feel like it's a, a, bit, a generous dose of luck that I've, my, my initial quick drawings have turned out to be pretty close. Of course, as soon as I say that, <laughs> you know, as soon as I say something like that, I'm gonna. I'm likely to have a a royal bomb. You know what I'm talking about? As soon as I start feeling pretty confident, <laughs> I'll blow it by a mile. So I'm, I'm gonna keep the arrogant, confident stuff way, way, way back on <laughs> the back burner. <laughs> At the moment, I'm living in fear and trepidation. Now. Part of my uh, strategy, trick, when I'm, when I'm doing a drawing like this, one of the tricks that I do employ is I try to start, uh, do my first drawing often in a light-ish color, thus the red. Now red isn't all that light, but I decided to go one, just one step darker than the orange that I splashed all over the canvas when I first got started. So, but I can still go to blue and purple to uh, to make my corrections. Hello. Sorry to interrupt. You. I no, won't ask you. No, please do. Please do. I paint. Oh, do you? And I have a nice beach full of beach scenery with the clouds and everything. Uh huh. But I'm, I'm debating what do I can use to highlight the, where the waves break. Yeah. You have the uh, titan, right? Titanium. Titanium. Yes. The one that pops. Pops. Exactly. Well, I'm that's glad it. To see you here, <laughs> and I have to come back and see how that. Yeah, please do. Please do. Are yes, you, that's do you a good. Horses? I do sometimes. Yes. <laughs> I have cards around here somewhere. Yes, I do. Good for you. What is your name? Norma Foyer. Hi, Norma. And, Good to meet you. Uh, yes, I go to the... In November, they have the Art of the Carolinas. That's right. I think I, you go there. I usually, I usually teach there. Oh, you do? So yeah. Your name. I, I always teach. Well, here's there. the funny okay. part. I always teach there, except for this year. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. But I'll keep an eye. Yeah, right, please thank do. You. Thank you, Norma. Good to meet you. Titanium. Titanium. <laughs> she has no idea why I said it that way. Most of you don't either. Probably. That's all right. Okay, so there's, I think, some of my basic structure. A woman standing right in front of, right there, right now. But I, I love her attitude. Got a hat on, got her hand on her shoulder, has a bag over her other shoulder. Love it. Okay, so. These are people, of course.
good enough for layer number one. Back in the olden days, a couple years ago, I used to, um, before I started doing live broadcasting, and I, I wish there was an easy way to do it now, I would take a picture of each step, each stage of the cleansing process and post it, step one through, you know, 12, 13, 14. Get the guy? <laughs> Thank you. Um, this would be a good, well, this uh, this would be my second picture. The first picture would have been the abstract. Come on, buddy. You have no idea what that means, but you're great at it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so affirming. <laughs> I don't know what that is. What you're great at. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and. Hmm, something's not right. <laughs> I couldn't decide which of these two was correct. My first guess was wrong, so this is the correct one up here. So. It's Maybe if I could draw a leg coming down from there. Farmer's market, so lots of hats today. <laughs> the lady with a bag over her shoulder and hand on hips. So I taught a, uh, a figure drawing class. Not that's no. Let me let me correct that. It was not figure drawing per se. It was how to paint figures into your landscape, which is of course what I do so much of the time. And I enjoyed it. I think I think. My students had a good time, and uh, I was able to refresh, consolidate in my mind. Um, the, the principles, the challenges, and so forth of uh, figures. One of one of the principles you're already seeing here in just a little the little bit that I've done. The principle I'm not sure that's a, a dynamics. One of the rules that's already at work here is that uh, I've got too much right hand this morning, eh? Um, if you're standing on a level surface no uphill, no downhill, and you're standing, then everybody that's the same height as you, everybody's heads fall at the same level. So that's why once you learn that trick, one of the things I do, as I did here, is 
I just drew a whole bunch of heads. Not all of those are going to turn into uh, into real into people, of course. Uh, but some of them are. One of the things you need to watch out for when you're painting a crowd of people is that you don't have soldiers on parade. Really, I've made that mistake so many times I can't even tell you that that you have you you, you accidentally make your figures um, equally spaced from each other. That's one problem, and then the other problem, the other mistake is that. Um, You make them all uh, too much having the same gesture, the same uh, the same lean, the same so uh, orientation, and so forth. So, want to make sure here early in this early in this process that I'm not doing that. There's a dog here. You can see. Nice little focal point. I probably want all of this area down here to be empty because I need some I need some resting room. I need some uh, space. I'm doing this painting in case you missed this detail. I'm doing this painting for uh, this developer for the the company that owns this shopping center. So. That's nice. They've hired me and uh, several other people, including my good buddy Mike Rooney, who maybe you've heard me talk about. If you watch me very often, we paint together every year for about a week. I've done that for five years now. Doing it again in October. Um, they, they're paying me to do three paintings. So yes, yeah, always nice to, to know that you're going to get paid for a painting. That's not the normal situation. You know, most of my paintings are, com are entirely speculative, on spec, as they say. It might sell, it might not. So it's a nice, nice treat to have uh, a painting that I'm going to get paid for. Commission paintings are a funny animal, however, and anybody who's done one knows what I'm about to say. There's a little bit of pressure. <laughs> a little bit of pressure when you're doing a commission painting. When, it, when it's not commission painting, you're free to do whatever you want. When it's a commission painting, all of a sudden there's a, a new layer of pressure because you're not just judging yourself, you're you're trying to guess what you think your client wants to see. So, aha. Uh -huh. I have found for myself that when I'm doing commissions, I tend to get more conservative. I tend to paint a little more cautiously and, uh, and sort of wish that I could break out of that. But on the other hand, <laughs> it just... It seems like prudence. Now, of course, thankfully, I have, I have enough of a style established. These people, they know what my paintings look like. So all I have to do is stay in the bullseye of my, my particular style and we'll probably be okay. But what that means is I'm a little bit less likely to experiment than I might be otherwise. And that's always a little bit of a loss because it is in the experiments. But you know what? I just figure, okay, eh, stay kind of safe, to kind of, a little bit safe today. I'll experiment on my own paintings. And I, in fact, I do that now. And maybe I'll experiment here too. 
But uh, if you've ever done a commission painting and find yourself suddenly sort of freezing up with with the the tension of uh, uh oh, I have to do what they want. Yeah, I just want you to know you are not the only one. That is pretty universal. There's a Five Guys Burger and Fries way at the end of this road, row, and uh, this is going to do that much. Hmm. See, I like this mark, and I like this mark, <laughs> but in my painting, there, there, there's nothing happening up there, which is okay. I just am finding myself wishing that there was something happening up there. Maybe I'll do a, a more dramatic cloud. How about that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, table, tables and tents galore up here. Just tables and tents everywhere. <laughs> and farmers. <laughs> Oops, you just got an earthquake. Sorry about that. Yahoo! Now, the next thing I want to do is establish some light and shadow. That's my biggest question. Now, do I want this sky to be blue? I do not. There we go. Just made the decision right, right that second. I want this, this sky, again, to be uh, complimentary. Definitely, definitely going to have the light, as it is right now, coming from our left. We're looking south, so the sun is coming up. It's morning. It's just almost 10 o'clock, so the, the sun will be coming in from this angle, which I think will make a really good composition. So all these people will be in shade. Here is a wall. <laughs> it sounds like such a profound statement. Here is a wall. <laughs> Obviously, that's a wall. Um, my point was going to be, <laughs> here's a wall, flat wall, flat plane, right? Flat plane. It's actually all in 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 uh, shadow right now, but I'm gonna. That would be a mistake, in my opinion. I'd lose a great opportunity. It would be a mistake to cast to cast that wall either all in sun or all in shade. So I'm going to do what you just saw me do there. I'm going to do an angle of shadow, angle of sunlight. And someone might ask, well, what's what's you know, what's making that shadow? Is there, there must be a tall building over here. Well, there actually are some really tall buildings across the street, so conceivably, that could be the answer. Other, but otherwise, I have no idea. <laughs> I 
I have no idea what's making that shadow. Um, what I know is, is that shadow, I'm gonna, let me accentuate it right now. So now I'm gonna paint the sunny, this, the, the wall, this sun hitting this wall. There's a lamp, a street light. See what I'm talking about? I'm gonna have a shadow. And of course, any any contrivance like that, if you do it too much, it could become just that a contrivance, a, a an overused trick. I, 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 I think I'm safe. <laughs> I, I don't think it's an overused trick yet. <laughs> could become one. At the moment, I don't think that's where it is. Here's a leg of the tent here. I'm going to paint a little bit in the sky just to help, help myself define, not lose my drawing. I'm going to have to put. I'm going to have to put a uh, another layer of uh, red, red and orange up on this sky because it's as acrylics do. They they become more transparent as they dry. So here's a tiny little detail. Maybe you can you can catch. You see here, there was a yellow underpainting, and I actually feel like I covered up too much of it. But I I painted mostly around the edge of this white wall. But I let some intentionally let some of the yellow show through underneath. I tried to do that quite a bit. Let the let the little bits of uh, underpainting show through never possible I'm going to paint some of the sky down here so that I don't lose my drawing. When you paint <laughs> messy the way I do, <laughs> um, it really is, it's really easy to, to lose your drawing. In other words, to, to render something fairly accurate, correctly and then come back later and forget what it was and, and mess it up. So if I feel like I've got it more or less Correct. I want to go ahead and help define it a little bit. So now I have just this sense of uh, top of the building. There's a 
the window way up here in this cupola. The window has uh, mulligans, dividers in it, so I just not nearly that fat, not, not nearly that thick. Um, Yes, acrylics dry. As they dry, they become more transparent. That can be an irritating feature. But you can also use it to your advantage. Understand it and, and um, anticipate it, and it, it actually can work for you a little bit. Oils, on the other hand, as far as I know, I don't do that. I've never noticed that happening with oils. Whatever color oils are, when you put them down, they stay that color. Go ahead and render in some of these tents really quickly. coming from behind. And let's put this woman here in the light. Heads in shadow, so um, the sun doesn't hit him till way down here. Does that make sense? Hey, at the moment, I think there are three diagonal lines that are that are going to really make this painting work. One is this one. This shadow here, the other one is here, and the third one is here. Those three lines, I feel like, are working very well. And they're going to help this rather chaotic scene to cohesive thing together. And that's all about light. It's an all light shadow lines. Shadow, shadow. Paint seems to be drying fairly quickly this morning, and that's always nice when that happens. Oh, 
Okay. Stop that, and let's go on to another another layer of glaze color. I don't know what color yet. Resist the temptation, and it is a temptation, to do blue in the sky. This is a, a technique that I employ, I don't know, maybe 20% of the time or something like that. It's subject to change, maybe I'll start doing it more or less, I'm not sure. Where I do, um, again, it's a classic, it's not, not, not unique to me by any means. It's a classic technique of doing complementary color under the whole painting. Um, specifically, and most especially, um, blue. I mean, that's not what I mean to say. Most especially, orange under the blue. Okay, this is again, this is my trick. Smearing out the thick bits so that they dry more quickly, and at the same time getting nice energy lines. Um, I saw a student just the other day do something I'd never. I, I was. I described. I demonstrated for them what I just. What I just demonstrated for you guys. Those those smear lines. I've, I've said so many times it only works if you do it fast with vigor and you go all the way off the canvas and I, I just can't stress that strongly enough if you try to pussyfoot around and do it slowly it will look terrible just trust me but then I saw I discovered a student after I'd explained that let me see what was what, what were they doing um, oh yeah they're going like this no, 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 no. Okay, I didn't make that clear. I guess I didn't spell that out. No, 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 no. One swipe. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> Not... <laughs> no, just one stroke. Otherwise, it, and again, this will... Oh, horrible, horrible. Never mind. Okay, let's... <laughs> okay. I can go ahead and do the sky in uh, red or orange again. Which means this painting um, really won't look. It, it will. It will very much not look like itself. <laughs> uh, it will very much not look like what it's going to look like until late, 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 last layer <clears throat> when I paint that sky blue. So everybody that looks at my painting for the next three hours will get a certain impression. Their impression will be significantly erroneous, significantly misguided, because they see this big red sky, and that's what they see. But you guys now know better. Uh, the red sky is the, just there as counterpoint to the blue that's going to come on top of it. Now I'm painting sunlight, okay? very intentionally warm, warm yellow. And by the way, it must be warm yellow. Again, I've, I've seen students when they do this part, they pull out their lemon yellow, their cad yellow light, their Hansa yellow. Oh my goodness. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Warm yellow, warm, 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 warm. Um, those, uh, Cad yellow light, Hansa yellow, lemon yellow are all freezing cold yellows. Now I'm confusing some of you because you've been taught your whole life that yellow is warm. Well, yeah, but within each color, there's warm, warm blues, cool blues, warm reds, cool reds, warm yellow, cool yellow. Some of you are still confused. In fact, some people have argued with me um, about it. That's okay. You're welcome to argue. <laughs> You're welcome to be wrong. Uh, Jeez, that's a snobby. Let, let me let me 
get okay, I'll get a little bit more technical and a little bit more specific. Again, some of you, many of you were simplistically taught by your high school or college art teacher that yellow is warm. But what about red? Isn't red warm? The answer is yes, red is warm. So wait a minute. Are there two warms? Yes, there are. Red and yellow are both warm. Blue, I'm primary colors here. You with me? I'm talking primary colors. There are two warm colors and one cool color. With me so far? Two warm colors, red and yellow. So if red and yellow are both warm, then what do you suppose is the warmest color? If you said orange, you are correct. It's a combination of red and yellow. So orange is warmer than either, here's where, here's again. And of course, you don't have to take my word for it. You can, I, 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 what I would recommend is that you use your eyeballs. <laughs> don't look it up in a book. Don't say, you know, look it up online. Which is the warmest, what are the warmest? No, just use your eyes, use your eyeballs. Your eyes can tell you, you should be able to discern what's warm and what's not, okay. So uh, orange is warmer than either red or yellow alone, because it's a combination of the two warm colors. Okay, so hang on. So is orange the warmest, warmest so color? Annoying. And in my opinion, now I'll grant this is my opinion, the answer is no. The answer is... Uh, the answer is yellow orange is in fact the warmest color. How do I get that? How do I get that? Real simple. I've already established that both uh, both red and yellow are both warm colors begs the question, are they both equally warm? Are they warm to the same degree? And again, my eyes tell me, and some research tells me, the answer is no. It, when it comes to red versus yellow, and here I'm just talking about right the center of the color wheel, you know, I, I haven't defined, haven't explained which, what, which red. So again, I'm, I'm just a straight up Middle of the middle of the color wheel, red, red, is warm, but it's not as warm as yellow. Therefore, orange is warmer than both of them. But yellow orange is the warmest of all. But that's what I believe. I could be persuaded, of course, that I'm wrong. I don't mean I don't hold these truths to be self-evident that all colors I created, you know, down here green and orange stuff. We're not we're not quite that heavy here. <laughs> it's just my opinion. Um, so, yellow orange, because yellow is slightly warmer than red. So, yellow and orange, so orange is warmer than either of them, but yellow orange is the warmest of all. Okay, so if you have a color wheel, this is a lot easier to talk about if I actually had a color wheel in front of me, but I don't. I'm not going to go get one today. I'll do this. I've done it before with a color wheel. If yellow orange is the warmest possible color, then that allows us to nail down or designate, pinpoint the coolest color. And in fact, the coolest color then is right exactly straight as a razor, straight as a, a ruler, straight across the center of the uh, color wheel from yellow orange is what color? Some kind of blue, yes. What color blue? Blue moving away from a reddish blue. Bingo, ding, 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 ding. If a, if a yellowish orange is the warmest color, are you with me? 
straight across from orange is blue. Yellow orange is the warmest, then blue, yellowish blue? No. Reddish blue is the coolest color. So that means, to, to, to name names here, that means that a purplish blue ultramarine. Ultramarine is the coolest color. <clears throat> you with me so far? We've established what is the warmest color is yellowish orange. The coolest color is exactly across the color wheel. Exactly. Straight line. And that would give us a reddish blue or a purplish blue. And if you're an artist, that's ultramarine. Okay? Now, let's go to my earlier statement. Most of you learned, because that's all a high school or middle school or high school or even a college <laughs> teacher, that, that's just decided maybe I can make this one person right here closer. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that your high school or college teachers taught you that whatever, red is warm, uh, uh, blue, uh, yellow, yellow is warm, blue is cool. And now we're getting way more, way more specific and scientific than that. Um, once you've established what is the warmest, yellow orange, and what is the coolest, reddish blue, then you can go to every other color on the color wheel and measure their distance from those two colors to determine. Okay, so let's go to yellow for a, for a moment. Hello. Like oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, where was I? So we. Yeah. So we, let's go to yellow. Not once you've once you've nailed down like true north. Once you've nailed down what is uh, the coolest and warmest colors. Then all you have to do is measure the proximity of any color to those colors to find out. So let's go to yellow, for instance, because I'm saying to you that there are warm yellows and cool yellows. And some of you are having a seizure right now saying, wait a minute, you just told us warm, yellows are warm. No, 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 no. Right, yellow is warm. Now I'm talking relatively speaking. There are some yellows that are warmer than others. Well, it's quite obvious because I just said a few minutes ago that I just said a few minutes ago that the warmest color is yellow orange okay so when you pick yellow there that means if that's the warmest color then what is a cool what is a cool yellow the answer is any yellow that moves away from orange in other words I mean the most obvious is again to use artistic terms cad yellow light is a I use the term just because so many people don't be able to seem to be able to see this, so I emphasize it to try to help you. Cad yellow light is a freezing, it is a freezing cold yellow. Freezing cold yellow compared to warm yellow, compared to orange. Okay? Let's now let's now go to the blues. A greenish blue. We had determined already that uh, We determined already with a reddish blue. In other words, ultramarine is the coolest of blues. If that is the case, then what blues are warm? The answer is blues that have yellow in them. That means blue that has green in it. That means blue that is, has a greenish cast. And when we start naming names of colors, what is what is blue? What color blue do you have on your palette that has a greenish cast? Exactly, phthalo blue. Now, cobalt blue. For those of you who use cobalts, and I don't because I don't need them because I can get a perfect blue with a combination of phthalo and ultramarine. Um, uh, uh, Cobalt blue is a favorite for some because it, it's it's right smack down the middle. It's neither warm nor cool. It's right down the middle of um, warmth, warm and cool. 
So if you want a warm blue, you use salo blue because it has more because it has more yellow green in it. You understand when I say blue with yellow in it, your brain says, "Oh, you mean green?" I say, "Yeah, of course, of course." But I'm just using the three primary colors to to make the, to to keep things simple, right? Um, so if it's that's so important that you understand, don't just pick up yellow like a mindless. I'm gonna be really mean here for a minute, so brace yourself. Don't pick up any color like a mindless ninny and say, well, yellow is warm, and start slapping around pretending that you're slapping warmth on your canvas, when in fact you may be slapping ice cold. Um, lemon yellow, Hansa yellow, cad yellow light. Now, again, let me just finish one more, one more thought, one more point in this regard. Um, and again, especially for those of you who may be slightly confused <laughs> by what I'm saying. Here, let me show you my, my oil palette for a second. So I, I arrange my, my oils in rainbow order. This rainbow is a circle, color wheel, right? But I start with violet and then go cool reds, mid, mid-tone, warm red, orange, warm yellow, which is Indian yellow, which is missing at the moment. Then a cool yellow in this corner. This is actually not very cool. Um, but in my mind, and in your mind, if you're having trouble with this, you should use your cad yellow light, hunter yellow, or lemon yellow. You should, in your mind, you should associate them with greens. Think of them as a green color and you'll be okay. Uh, so that means, do you, if, you, I want, if I want to, like I do, if I want to warm up this light stuff here, am I going to slap it with some green? But I, I just told you to think of, I just told you to think of cad yellow light, Hans yellow, lemon yellow, not as a yellow, but as in fact as a green. Think of it as a green. Why? Because where do you use those light, 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 cold yellows? The answer is in mixing with greens. That's where you use them. In fact, speaking of green, I'm going to go ahead and do some green right now. So what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that you begin to think of those cold yellows more as if, think of them as if they were greens and you'll stay out of a whole bunch of trouble. Okay? Underpainting of green underneath uh, subject that's going to be green, but I'll, I'll fix that in a, just a few minutes. I will be slapping some purple probably on top of on top of that red green foliage. Purple is the color that I use most commonly for, for an underpainting of, of foliage, trees, bushes, grass, and so forth. Now, what I'm doing right now is a little bit different because I'm not painting foliage. This is a, a green tint, and uh, I'm okay doing. I'm okay doing. Uh, same here. I'm okay doing uh, green under a manufactured green color. Okay, I'm actually coming along quite nicely here. Nearly finished with the. acrylic stage. Tell you what, let me come in. I'm going to do some, some a little bit darker. So I'm opening up my brown for the first time. My least favorite transparent color. Because it's a color killer. But every once in a while, I want... Fruit. <laughs> fruit. 
I've forgotten all about the produce. I've forgotten all about the farmers market here. <laughs> be sure to add. Be sure to add some uh, stuff on, on all these tables. My tables are all. When we got there, the cupboard was bare at the moment, so we certainly need to fix that. that to dry just a minute. White highlights, and I'll be ready to go to work. I have to wait just a minute for this to dry. I know. While I'm waiting for it to dry, I can actually I can stand a little more pencil again. I don't normally do pencil twice in the acrylic stage. Remember, we are not painting by formula, we're not painting by rules, we're not painting by steps, we're not painting, we're always, 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 you paint with your eyes, that is what you're painting with, your eyes tell you everything, so even though my formula, so to speak, doesn't tell me to draw with pencils right now, my eyes are saying, hey, I could do some more scratchiness right here, all over everywhere, I could do some more some more scratchiness. It was my eyes that told me that, not my, not my, an, sort of speak, not my analytical left brain. That was a right brain, creative, intuitive decision. Not, not, not. Um, how do you know, let me give you a, 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 how do you know if you're trying to paint too much by formula instead of intuition? It's real easy. I'll give you one main bellwether, one indicator. If when you're watching me or another teacher, any teacher whatsoever, and, and they say to you, now I'm picking up, like Bob Ross does here, he said, I'm picking up some zinc white and some phthalo blue, and if you rush to your notebook and say, wait, 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 what did he say, what did he say? Wait, wait, he said, oh, he said, wait, he said, zinc white and phthalo blue, and you write that down, zinc white, phthalo blue, if that's you, then you don't know how to think with your eyes yet. That is not the kind of thing. I mean, unless there's a, an extraordinary rare recipe for some weird color, and it's got 14 different, I'm exaggerating here, unless there's some really extreme, obscure formula, 
you don't mix colors by recipe. If you do, if, if you have to have a recipe to mix colors, you're blind. I, I'm, I'm sorry to break the news to you. <laughs> Your whole life you thought you could see, but if, if, if you have to write down the teacher's formula for color, then no, you're not painting by sight, you're painting by recipe. And that's not how you paint. You don't get good paintings by painting by recipe or formula. Get good paintings by using your eyes. Your eyes tell you what to do. That's what, you, and that's what you pay attention to. Use your eyes. So in this case, even though it's outside my normal formula, my eyes were saying, "Hey, I need some scratchy here. I need some pencil." Sorry if I just burst your bubble. But here's the good news. Might as well learn it here. If you haven't learned it yet. And, and get off that wagon. Get off that. Get off that train where you feel like you have to have a recipe for it. You do not. Trust your eyes. Your eyes are, will tell you. The same thing with the, the freezing cold yellow. Some of you thought that all yellows were warm and you're slapping freezing cold yellows down on your canvas. Why? It's because you're trusting a formula. The formula is, quote, all yellows are warm. <laughs> In spite of the very fact that your eyes are going, dang, this doesn't look very warm. Okay, trust your eyes, trust your eyes, trust your eyes. Okay, there you go. So a little bit more warmth, sunlight, nice, warm. By the way, you can see, the yeah, you can see this, the light behind my canvas, can't you? Perfect example of warm sunshine. Um, and it's getting up close to noon, hour and a quarter. That means it's, it's less warm than at any other time during the day. The sun is closest to white at high noon, right? Yes, right. <laughs> But even at high noon, we always are circling a warm yellow star. We are not circling a, a big red or a, anything else. Our star is yellow. And some of you uh, just have never opened your eyes. I, I had a student years ago, a little bit older woman, who just, just argued with me, couldn't see it. I said, what color is that light? She said, why? I said, no, okay, okay, look at the shadows. Do you see that the shadows have a slight purple yellow? The color of the shadows? Gray? <laughs> and it's like, whoa. Wow. Okay. Wow. Huh. That's interesting. And I, I, I put it down as simply a lack of pure visual acuity. Pure visual perception. She was, she was paint. She was seeing out of the left side of her brain, the analytical. The roses are red, violets are blue side of your brain, if, if I may. Right? A formula. The, the light is light and dark is dark. Light is white and dark is gray. <clears throat> That's why she couldn't see that the shadows were bluish purple and that the sun was warm. It wasn't because she couldn't see it. It's just because she she was not actually receiving what her eyeballs are telling her. It's just about the best way to put it. Okay, good enough. Now, some quick white highlights. I'm ready to move on to oils. This part of the painting process, this step of the painting process, always goes so quickly. Um, and I, I look at my watch and go, dang, I haven't done way ahead of schedule. <laughs> and then, hang on a minute. Let me take a minute to pull up all these paints so they're not drying out anymore. I'm done with all these, all of them except white. I say, man, I'm, I'm really flying here, because I am flying. But <laughs> reality is about to hit. <laughs> when I get to basically the last layer, the final edit, it's the final edit typically covers no more than 15% of the canvas, but takes. 75% of the time 
It's the slowest, longest, slowest, most careful. Of course. You know all that. But at this point, it's like, man, I'm really moving right along. <laughs> ah, okay. This is part of the reason I don't want cads or cobalts, by the way. Because if I had cad or cobalt, even in acrylic, here I am drip it, dipping my faint hands in that water. That would be just more dangerous than I want to take the chance of. Some people say, no, no, they're perfectly safe. California says, no, they're not. My old joke, we don't live in California, so it's okay. Okay. Now. White. White highlights, light stuff. Every single step of the painting process. I want my marks to be interesting. Interestingness trumps literalness every day. And the essence of interestingness is variety. So there you go. I want variety in my brush strokes. It's part of the reason why I use two hands. Thank you. Say interesting brush strokes. Think Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> Right? What was that guy doing? He was doing paintings. <laughs> Don't usually use a palette knife in the uh, acrylic stage. Every once in a while I do. It was one of those once in a while. So just... <laughs> By the way, recommending tools is not the same as giving you a recipe. <laughs> yes, it's okay for you to grab your notebook and write down. Wait a minute. What kind of what did he say? When it, when, you, when I'm recommending product, not not when I'm mixing color. That that's not the legal use of your left brain. I'm exaggerating slightly when I say you should, when I intimate, when I suggest that you should never write down a color recipe. That, that's, I'm exaggerating somewhat, but but it's the spirit of, of that I've seen so many times of the person, the student, who goes scrambling for their notebook every time the teacher tells the class what color he or she used to mix. That, that, that that's what's that's what's misguided. Is that? Oh, oh, gotta write that down. No, 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 no. Every once in a while, there's a recipe you want to write down, but most of the time, no. Hello. Thank you.
Thank you. painting here just for a minute. Try to make these letters just a little more legible. Once again, if you weren't here earlier, let me repeat. Everybody looking at my painting, people come by and they say, ooh, nice. They're seeing this big red-orange sky. And no doubt they think it's, I don't know, dramatic or charming or something. They say, ooh, beautiful. But it's not going to stay that way. Okay? You and I know that's just an underpainting. That a classic underpainting trick, technique. For achieving, thank you, for achieving a really dramatic um, blue sky. Dramatic blue sky, semicolon, underpaint in orange. Here's a, <laughs> for what it's worth, when I do when I do my people like this, starting out in a very abstract, abstract blobs, and then come back and um, make them more realistic, I almost always, I say almost invariably, <laughs> um, make their heads too big. Um, I, I sort of wish that I didn't, but you know, it's sort of on the other hand, it's no big deal because I know that I'm gonna. I know I'm going to make them smaller later on, but um, would I save myself some work if I made them smaller to begin with? I don't know. Logically, that seems seems to make sense. Too much right hand here, folks. Too much right hand. That's, that's... Okay, so I guess peaches. I saw a watermelon over there a few minutes ago. Go watermelon peaches and a watermelon. All kinds of stuff. Corn on the cob. Yeah, but like. vegetables. This guy here, he's carrying a whole bucket of something. He's been standing there the whole time holding up that 40 pound bucket of something. Judging by his body language, it's about 40 pounds. Whoops. I 
guess this could be somebody holding the food, but no. So you can see from this layer of white, too, that I, I'm wanting to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> really uh, organize, nail down my um, composition, pretty much. I want, I, want, I want you to know where my lightest lights, darkest darks are. <laughs> I've got a long ways to go yet, too. I have a long ways to go yet. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear it. Glad it looks way better. What am I trying to paint? Oh, I thought you knew that. Okay, look around. I'll give you a few hints. Number one, I don't, my, I don't point my easel at what I'm painting. It's this place. <laughs> exactly. You got it. Exactly. You did. No. No. When I'm finished, the sky's actually going to be blue with clouds. But sometimes it looks cool if you do orange underneath your blue sky. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Speaking of sky. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to. Bye bye. I'm going to. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to um, suggest some clouds in here. shake too much. It's too straight. Um, okay, it'll work if I go back up here. So I've got a dip. There we go. I think that'll work. Yeah, and then a, a peak there. Yeah, that's better, I think. Okay, while that dries, put away my acrylics, clean my brushes, get on my oils, which have been sadly baking in the sun. So I hope some of them are still usable. <laughs> Okay, bear with me just a minute. I'm going to go water some plants with this. I had one of my viewers just a few weeks ago. I, I was out painting and I took a, my bucket of water and threw it across the lawn, wherever I was. And somebody said, Oh, I sure hope that wasn't something. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, some of you are still. Still a little bit confused about paints. That's all right, it's understandable. If you're my age or older, you think of paints essentially as the stuff that your papa went and bought at Ace Hardware back in the 70s. 
Or if you're happy to grow up in an artist's home, you think of turpentine and linseed oil. Back when our parents were painting, there was no such thing, of course, as acrylics. But even the oil paints that they used were so much more toxic than what we used. Nowadays, in a painter's group, typically, if you open a can of turpentine, you will be invited to leave. You will, in fact, be forced to leave. You, you cannot open turpentine in a, you know, in a painter's group. You'll be kindly escorted off the premises along with your turpentine. That, that's how, whatever. Right? You know, we don't use turpentine anymore, except outdoors. Now, uh, of course, there are, I know, there's these weird atelier people. And I use turpentine, honestly, once in a while, outdoors. And even then, <laughs> not because necessarily of toxins, but just because it smells so bad, I only use it if it's good and breezy outdoors. I don't even want it, like today, it's not breezy enough. I want a good stiff breeze to blow that <laughs> blow that stuff away. Anyway, but when I pour out my acrylic paints, please understand those are all non-toxic colors. Uh, and and the the, uh, the acrylic medium itself is not toxic. It's like Elmer's glue. So, I think Elmer's glue might be organic, I'm not sure. Um, be that as it may, I'm not... <laughs> Please rest assured, I'm not killing the grass. Okay, now I wish I had some... I got a number of brushes here that are in pretty rough shape. That one will do. And I guess... That one will do. It comes from not being cleaned very well, and it, they're cheap, so... In my van, I have a whole... I have 20, 30 more but I didn't grab them today. Okay, so we're down to, we are down to, or up to, whichever way you like, like to look at it. We're up to oil glaze. And uh, I need some Indian yellow for sure. I can do any colors that I want. Um, some people have also questioned the efficacy or wisdom of um, doing oil on top of acrylic. And of course, nobody knows for sure. We won't know for 100 or 200 years whether my, my technique is a mistake or not. And you won't either, so <laughs> we're all in the same boat. Nobody alive today will know if my technique is a mistake, okay? That's first of all. Okay, secondly, but given our best guesses, I think, I feel fairly confident that, that my technique is safe. A couple reasons. First of all, most of you, if you're oil painter, most of you, not all, not all, most of you are painting oil on top of acrylic on every single painting you do. Unless, of course, unless you are careful to purchase oil gessoed canvas, which of course they make, and some of you do do that, but you are the extreme minority, do you understand? 99% of the artists out there, they go to the store, they buy the bare canvas at Michael's Hobby Lobby, Jerry's Artorama, AC Moore, you name it. They just buy their canvas and they go home and paint oils on it. When they do that, they're painting oil on top of acrylic. Most of the time they've never even thought about it. Okay? And that's fine. So, I, yes, I think I think that all of those paintings, I don't think you're in deep trouble. I think in 200 years, I think they'll be doing this fine. Now, there's some people who say you shouldn't do oil on top of acrylic because of adherence. It won't, it won't stick. It'll peel off. And I, there's two things. One is I can imagine that if you painted with thick acrylic, just slabbed it on there, acrylic is plastic, of course. And if you just slabbed, literally slabbed the paint onto your, 
canvas, let it dry, and then you put oil on it. It'd be like doing oil paint on top of a plastic toy. Your son's plastic toy truck. Indeed. Correct. True. I, that is correct. And I would have some concerns, even though, listen to this, I don't know if you've ever tried to peel good or, good oil paint off anything plastic. It does not come off very easily. I have a pallet at home. I was using it last night. It's made out of some kind of plastic. And believe me, the oil on that pallet is in no danger of peeling off. <laughs> I mean, I've taken, I've taken razor blades to it, uh, chisels, belt sander, you name it. Uh-uh, it is not coming off. So that's why oil paints are so popular, because they're pretty darn tough. Once they dry, man, they, they, they aren't going anywhere easily. So um, even if I were painting on a slab of plastic, I wouldn't be terribly... I would not be terribly concerned because oil sticks pretty well to plastic. But there's two things. Number one, I, I am not painting on a slab of plastic, right? My acrylics are fairly thin. And number two, you could argue that I should wait a little while for my uh, acrylics to cure. And I would say, yes, that's a good point. And I'm, I'm defending my technique here a little bit. And those of you who want to imitate my technique, I want to give you a little bit of confidence. The fat, and this is completely serendipitous, I didn't know this when I started 15 years ago, but the fact that I use liquid, and that's a good reason for sticking with liquid instead of something less smelly, I, it turns out that liquid plays very well with water. There is a serendipitous accidental relationship between between liquid and H2O. Uh, so the, oil, the acrylic painting that I just covered up with a glaze of liquid is going to continue to cure through the liquid without any trouble at all. So there you go. Just for those of you who are wondering, and especially for those of you who maybe want to imitate, emulate, copy, follow my technique in some way, if you want some degree of assurance that your painting isn't gonna fall off in 100 years, there you go. I think I think we're pretty safe. Now, again, having said that, nobody knows for sure. And I would like one of you people to come back and tell me in a hundred years if my painting fell off. Okay, deal? Will you do that for me? <coughs> Somebody out there? Volunteer. <laughs> come and let me know. Okay, let's get some brushes up here. Hello. Fan brush, that's a good one. Some teeny tiny things here that I definitely don't need. I'll keep that one out just in case. One more. There we go. I ought to be able to get the job done with those. <laughs> okay, before I go on though, let's see if I need to rag out anything and I think I do fairly and fairly gently bring, these, bring some light out on these clouds again here's a nice thing by the way on a on a nice warm day like today that's not terribly humid it's it's humid but it's not 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 any of that 80 90 percent kind of stuff that, that we all get so, um, again, sorry about that earthquake. Uh, that the, the layer of liquid, the glaze that I just put on this painting, um, will actually be pretty dry in about 45 minutes. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's just not cool to be able to use oil paints and for it to be dry that quickly. I'm removing 
some of this warm right here because I just decided right then I want this this shadow down here to be bluer. When I did that warm all over it, 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 it definitely, of course, got much warmer. So there. So I can come back later and, and add some blue glaze to that if I so choose. Same thing here. I want this tint to be blue. This one also. All right. I think I'm ready to proceed. So at this point in my formula, in my step one, two, three, I either do pencil, I draw with pencils, or draw with brushes. Easy choice today because I did pencil twice in the acrylics layer, which is a little bit unusual. Um, I've already got, I've already got lots of pencil lines on here. So today, the next order of business is draw with brushes. What I call drawing is anytime I'm doing skinny little lines with fairly small brushes, I call that drawing. Um, and there is not a ton of drawing that needs to be done on this particular painting. I, 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 I've done a lot of the drawing already. got a purplish color. Right, don't run to your notebook. <laughs> right? I've got a purple-ish color on my brushes right now. It's pure violet, but I added a little tiny bit of oxide red brown. Again, don't rush, do not rush to your do not rush to your notebook and write that down. No no no. Tomorrow, I'll paint with it. But tonight, I'll paint with a completely different color. It's all intuitive. You paint with your eyes, not with, not by recipe, not by formula. You paint with your eyes. How do you know which color to put down next? You use your eyes. You think, huh, I wonder what, wonder what this color would look like. And of course, you can give it a try. Okay. I'm beating that drum really hard today, but it's one that has needed beating for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some bad joke, doesn't it? What's the paint today? What's the paint today? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good. Huh? This, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Let's see, how are you? Good. Two when, hands. Yeah, what did you start? When? Today. An hour and a half ago? Maybe, maybe two hours ago? I always forget to look at my watch. <laughs> yeah, not very long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Everybody should paint with two hands. <coughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever painted with two hands. There you go. So what are you Helps up to these days? Up. Other than this, what are you doing these days? This is, the, I mean, this is a painting. Painting a lot, thankfully. Teaching some. And doing what, some? Teaching. Teaching, teaching art, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, cool. Yep. Good. Can't complain. I, well, I can. Do you want to hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, save it, right? <laughs> take, take the day off for play the barbecue. Yeah, we all need to do that every now and then. That's <laughs> good. All right. Well, it's too hot to stand here for very long. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Good to see you all. Thank you. As I said, this this particular painting didn't need a lot. Okay, I'm gonna stop there.
Now, again, normally, I would draw it in brushes and then draw the pencil. But again, there's still enough pencil showing that I don't need to do that. You know what? Hang on just a minute. I just realized. No, no, no. Yes, this foliage. You were with me a while ago. I mentioned that actually purple is my my most common when I'm painting foliage. <laughs> Trees, bushes, grass. Um, purple is my go-to color. Okay, now you could write that down in your notebook. <laughs> Because that's that's not very that's not very intuitive, right? That could be a reminder. You don't have to write it down, of course. <laughs> but that that is counterintuitive. Um, again, because it's almost complementary, not quite. Purple is complementary of the yellow, right? But I find that, it, that, that the purple gets me going and it's good. It's dark. Uh, Gets me going in a good direction and a, and a good value. Doing uh, red would be another option. I do that sometimes, but it's the, the red is not very dark generally. So it, speaking of red, let's, let's do some real quick. Fruit, color of fruit. Oh, and I don't have a nice, I do not have a red, uh, 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 red. I do not have a yellow, uh, uh, good green. I do not have a green here, very, very much, so. I just have to make green with what I've got. That'll do, that'll do. Instead of doing pencil, I'm going to do fuzz layer. Da -da 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 -da. The most difficult <laughs> for me, the scariest and most difficult layer. And normally it's the next to the last layer, the fuzz layer. Now today I may very well come and do, do pencil um, on top of the fuzz. So we'll see. Okay, the fuzz layer, what is it? And, and, and again, I, with all of my developments as my, and my evolutions as an artist, and, and just for what it's worth, almost everything that I do as a painter um, has evolved uh, within myself. That is, I didn't learn it from somebody else. Like you might say, well, where'd you learn how to paint? Who'd you learn to paint like this from? Nobody, nobody, nobody. Made this up myself, for better or worse. The jury's still out. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, with each, with each, um, evolution, I, I never know if it's going to stick around, if it's going to be a permanent part of my formula, or if it's just temporary, right? Does that make sense? And, um, I've been saying that about this fuzz layer for two years now. And rather than fading. Hello. How are you doing? Hello, how good. Are you? Very good. Do you remember us? From, I, I, from where? Okay, so, yeah. Lots so, of weddings. So, huh? so you originally did the one for our daughter at the um, in Durham at the Bay 7. Seven. Yeah. So is that your son-in-law yes. Yes. singing? Yes. Uh, Jason came up earlier. Did he? Oh, fantastic. Good yeah, to see you. Oh, is your daughter the singer also? No. No, no okay. No. And then you do she's one the dancer. Yep. Okay, no, I, I have a, because I, I know she's on my website. I, I've done like three big seven. She's not the singer, but she's the, when I sing, the dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he sang up there for it. But yeah. Oh, did you? No, my heart, no, him. Oh, Jason did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. then you did one of our friends in South Carolina. Oh, no kidding. And one in... 
close to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and then you did the prints, I think. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, you did <laughs> How fun. Well, thank you. And you did the produce. Right? That's right. Well, evidently, I owe you a commission, don't I? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's really <laughs> Thank you. Well, fun, fun, fun. Thank you for speaking. So, do you all live here in Raleigh? Yeah. Oh, really? We moved to Mac. Oh, no kidding. Oh, my goodness. Well, welcome to Raleigh. Ha! Hope we treat you well. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, good. Wow, just in May. Let's say welcome to Raleigh, truly. So, did you follow kids? Did you follow grandchildren, buddy? Oh, yes. So, yeah, so my daughter is. <laughs> My daughter-in-law is expecting September 23rd. Oh, fantastic. My daughter is expecting October 17th. Ah, really? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, you have, is this your first uh, grandchildren? No, we have one that just turned two yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 I was going to say they are well, as we much. We had to come say hi. Oh, I'm so see, glad see you did. You do it, we love your work. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day. And <laughs> I'm sure you. we'll see you again. Yes, had another wedding up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I was saying that my fuzz layer, so far, not only is it sticking around, but it actually seems to be growing on me. Um, it is taken on a okay, So here's, here's my description of the fuzz layer. There's four descriptions. One soft, as it suggests, soft edges. No hard edges, all soft edges like that. Number two, um, translucent. Oh, nothing opaque. You can always see through it to what's underneath. Uh, number three, paint things that are glowing, I guess. And number four, local color. That It's the number four that has taken on lately a little life of its own. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to jump ahead right here and, and demonstrate that for you. What do I mean by that? Um, the local color, that's, and then that's weird, this is weird artist talk for roses are red, violets are blue kind of color. Local color means the color that the thing really is. The sky is blue. Okay, that's what that local color means. I don't know why artists call it local color, but... Probably because every, every field of human endeavor has to have its own little private code talk to make sure that we keep people who aren't in the code out in the dark. Okay. <laughs> Um, let me let me demonstrate this. Uh, what I mean by local color. Okay. For, oh, and, and, and of course, I guess this goes without saying. When I say translucent, that means it's opaque paint, opaque paint applied very thinly. Okay, so it, it has white in it. It all has white. In it. So let's say, for instance, right now this character right here. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. I sort of feel like it's a woman. She is uh, just a big dark blob right now. Of course, I don't want her to stay a big dark blob. So I'm going to do some local color on here. So I've just I've mixed up a ultramarine blue. While uh, while I've got blue, let's do some blue over here on this guy. On uh, this guy and this woman's leg right here. There's a lot of, of course, a lot of people wearing shorts here today, so there'll be a lot of flesh color there. Andrea, what are you doing here? Oh my gosh! Oh, baby, I wish it was. It is! What are you doing here? What are you doing in town? Yeah. My youngest um, just turned 16. So we're here yeah, with, we just came oh, to fun. shop and mess around. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Is this this? Oh, it is this. It is. I don't know what this looks like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I wouldn't recognize it. Oh, no, it's a, it was bad. I was at the art gallery yesterday. I was like, oh, I didn't go in there because we were sitting down. But, um, uh, 
Yeah. Two days. The what I mean is day before yesterday. Yeah, I ran up. Well, nah, not as much as I like. I'm the big frog in the pond. Killing Rally. I'm officially the Rally's best artist. Name designated that this year. Finally. But I, I don't care about that. <laughs> I want to be, be in New York. Or Santa Fe. Or, of course. Not not to live. Not to live. Taos, yeah. Not to live. But to, to, to. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. In 1997, you couldn't see this at all. No, that's right. So who knows? <laughs> exactly, 1997. Oh, you're a young guy, so. That's right. That, you got that's right. Time. That's right. Thank you. So this is this was 20 years, 20 years. Actually, uh, since we started, yeah, 2004. I know, but we we started yeah. Cornerstone in seven. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. February. Yep. Exactly. So. Oh, what fun! Are you Good keep going? I'll watch it for a minute. Okay. So tell me, how are all your people? Good. Uh, you know, Seth and Alicia are living with us still. You knew that, right? Did we tell you that? No. Did we tell you that? I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Anyway, they've been with happened. us for 13 months. And but they're three or four children. Four, four kids. We're loving it. I mean, we'll be happy when they move out, and we'll be sad when they move out. <laughs> it'll be the I know, sad day and like, happy day. Yeah, it's a blessing, and then... <laughs> That's right. You know, you'll, you'll look back on the time that, and Exactly. Like, Exactly. We lived with our grandchildren. Um, but then Seth be just like, got a job as a youth pastor and adult assimilation at a church called Hey, now I know what. So you go this way. So that's exciting. That's well, we should connect because I'm in charge of assimilation. Oh, are you really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no so, kidding. I do small groups and assimilation. Well, do you really? And yeah, yeah. You can yeah. see yeah. since then. Well, yeah, probably. A little flat. Was it three years ago? Two and a half years ago, yeah. we were with you guys. Because you were up there painting. Yep, yep, yep. So, yep. Well, that's exciting. And then... Uh, David and Dorothy are trying for their second baby. They've got one out in, out in Flagstaff. Cameron and Kelsey are expecting a baby in uh, oh gosh, you're just in a full December. Flipper, aren't you? That would be All fun. All those babies. That would be fun. Cousins. Yeah. How fun is that? Yeah. That's fine. So um, what will you do with good. this painting? This is, uh, North Hills is paying for this one. He's, he's there to commission me to do three paintings. One of the beach music, one of the farmer's market, and one of a crossroad that I already did. So cool, huh? Well, we were here for the beach music thing. Were you? But my children, again, they're completely interested. <laughs> we went to the um, movies. Have you ever been to that movie? They have recliners. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we let the kids pick the movie, and I just said, just as soon as it's Satan or demons, I'm out. <laughs> so, but if we made it through, but I, I gave it three strikes, and it only took two strikes, so I took that out. And we've just been, um, we've been oh, doing fun, fun stuff. There Tell your mom hi for me. I will, but she thinks you're the absolute Oh, greatest. she, yeah, that's <laughs> sweet. So. Yeah, she hopes we were going to smile on Facebook. She does. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we're probably distracting you. We're probably not supposed to Ah, that's quite alright. Quite alright. Yeah. Tell Doug hi. Of course. Well, we're getting old, man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me and say that. <laughs> it's hard to believe it. It's like, wow. We're still on the way up. This year. Did you really? Are you what? You're what? 50. Wow. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy your youth. Oh, he's just kind of doing it. He sees it yeah. Acrylic, good question. A lot of acrylic underneath just switched to oil a few minutes ago. So the only thing that's oil right now is this fuzzy stuff that I'm putting on. This is oil. But yeah, most of the work on there is acrylic. It's a very good question. And one that you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at it. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's going to be blue, actually. Oh, it is, yeah, with just a little bit of that peeking through. Yep, with just a little bit of that peeking through, exactly. It'll look, it looks cool when you do a orange, pinky orange underpainting under blue sky. Yeah, this this color right here, that's... I love that. Well, I'm going to go get tomatoes, okay. but I'd like to let my girl say hi to you. Oh, sure. She won't be able to really appreciate it, but I will. <laughs> All right, I'll see you.
<laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> now, if I was talking about anything, I completely forget what, what it was. So, um, oh, I know. I was talking about. That's right. I was talking about uh, the fuzz layer and using using local color, um, creating, getting, and and again, you see here what I mean by soft edges. Hey, <laughs> I hope you're hope you're going. Dang, that's really messy. Right. If you don't feel that way, you're not paying any attention. Yes, definitely. Really, really, really loose. Really loose. And that's why this step, of, this phase of the painting process is so difficult. It, it's, I'm forcing myself to paint messy, to mess up my painting. And yeah, it's kind of hard to do that. Everything in me recoils, goes, ah, no, 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 don't believe you're messing it up. Ah! Just like if you try it, just like you'll feel it. But I've learned somewhat. Go, no, 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 no. It's gonna be okay. No, nope, no, nope, don't worry about it. I put shorts on this lady. And on this lady. And on this person. There's a two handed painter out here. So. <laughs> hey man, good, good to, to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Wow. What fun. Good to see you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is what I do. So I'm, I'm on step 12, maybe, of 14. Really? So I'm, I'm, I'm close to the end, but the last, the last right. layer, the very last step, is by far the slowest. And what is the last final step? edit? Light opaque highlights. Okay. And and or final edit, I call it. And the sky's going to be blue. I'll do that in oh, the final kidding. in the final layer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know it looks it looks fun and dramatic. But you can see where where did I just? I'm okay. I keep hitting my camera. I'm broadcasting on YouTube. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> Um, That's a good idea. Yeah, it's hot out here. Yeah. I don't want to stay out in that sun very long. Uh -huh. No. Whew. So, how long have you been doing this? This particular painting, you mean? No, like painting with both hands. Oh, well, painting with both hands about 10 years. How long have been an artist? My whole, whole life. Right. In kindergarten, I thought I was an artist. <laughs> um, my dad is a good painter, so. Um, yeah, painting in public uh, depends how you count it. 20 years. Two hands. 10 or 12. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really neat. It's amazing. This is what I do. And thankfully, the, the team builders, the, the, the developers here are paying, yeah. me, paying me to do this. Oh, great. So that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they I have really I transformed this morning. But were you, you were there? No, no. I went to. Um, Did you go with Jim? No, he actually <laughs> texted me. I went, but he, he texted me and said he was helping somebody in need. And he didn't okay. explain what okay. that was. But. So we went, but you went to the, that, was it the meeting that he goes to? Yes, yes. It was packed. It was what? Packed. Was it really? I mean, yes. There was, I only saw one seat available. Wow. I love your it, easel. And was it good? Was yes, it, it was good. Very good. 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 I like it a lot. Um, I'm glad to hear it. It was a different kind of meeting. They have different, you know. Different flavors? Flavors, right. This was a literature meeting. And it no was, kidding. Um, they're talking. going through one of the a, books, and not the a, a big book, you know, the big book, uh -huh. 12 or 12, but it's called Living Sober. And they, it's all on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to advertise it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, well, it was well, good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That is a hot sun. It is. Do you yeah, want to move I, on? I would, I would die without these umbrellas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, since you're still here, so then the next step is probably going to be back to some some pencil stuff. It's very unconventional to use pencils in, in the oil paints. Um, but it's just a crazy thing that I've developed because I, I like it. I like how it looks. And now, it, are you painting this from memory? Or is this no, 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 no. No, it's right here. I mean, oh, right okay. now I am. Okay. <laughs> right, right this second I am. I see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely painting that right, right there. Wow. 
Yeah. I have just absolutely no clue. <laughs> now that's funny, because I would think, Jay, with your professional I can background, that things, you would be, this would be right next door to what you already yeah, do. Yeah, you one would think. <laughs> Well, yeah, I initially can, wanted to be an architect, but yeah. I realized I couldn't draw. Oh, really? So I went into engineering. <laughs> yeah, which is just one step removed. Yeah. You still have to be able to ideate, right? We'll call it, right. You call it that? Yep. Do you care about dating? No, not at all. Do you want to go see Yeah. Find shade. Find shade? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's what I'd say. Can go back to the bench where I found you? She, she just picked me up on the side of the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be Good to see you, Jay. If it's a, you know, $10 a month, then don't worry about it. Now, what, let me say this again. I've said it many times. <clears throat> um, I'm doing the pencil. Partly because it, it helps in capturing, rendering, a, you know, a realistic image, partly. But the main reason I'm using it, of course, is because I just like how the scratchy pencil lines, <coughs> how they look uh, in contrast to the, what I call, the smooshy uh, paint lines. Okay, that's statement number one. Statement number two... Um, at the end of this year phase, um, I will have way too much pencil. Way too much. Too much of a good thing. I'll have way too much pencil on my painting. <clears throat> okay? But not to worry, because I still have the final edit yet to come. And in the final edit, I will remove as much as many of these pencil lines as I feel like it. so any place where I feel like I've done too many lines <clears throat> but it's easier right now just to go ahead and just draw so to speak to my heart's content just draw the way I feel like drawing without worrying about overdoing it just go ahead and overdo it because I can I'm going to fix it in the next step and as you can see the, the, uh, the pencils are like at the opposite end of the spectrum from the uh, from the fuzz layer. Right? And by the way, I'm not sure I finished the fuzz layer. Let me just pause and give this some thought. That's amazing. Oh, good. I'm going to run Sandra. around real quick and leave Jay Bird on the bench okay. over there. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I need some more um, light colors. Clothing and some of these people. So, <clears throat> here recently I've discovered that this the fuzz layer is even more helpful than I originally thought even more helpful for uh, getting the painting, especially the colors, especially the co values too, but especially the colors, but getting the colors, you know, close to their final destination. Um, it, it puts less pressure on the, the final uh, layer, the final, the final edit. If, if, for instance, here's, here's a good one right here. I just, just about missed it. Let me finish this. It. And it's, as you can see, it's a very fast way of painting. Uh, I, I, I stumble it in really quickly. So like this tent right here, I want that to be a, a blue tint when it's all done. So there, it's already a blue tint. And the blue is escaping out. Uh, into the atmosphere around the blue tent, which is a huge plus. That is very much on purpose. 
because turns out us human beings we like to see little bits of the object that have escaped in the background and vice versa I've, I've said that it's given you that that little motif so many times so I'm not for the mercy of the people have heard me say it too many times <laughs> Mixing up some green right now, and you know what? I all of this is rare, but I really wish, I really wish that I had a cad yellow light. By the way, not, when I say cad, I mean cad imitation. I don't need, we don't need. I don't think anybody can tell the difference between the, the cad color, the yellow, and imitation cad yellow. I don't think so. Red, yes, yes. I can easily tell the difference between cad and red imitation and real cad red. But, okay, so I just mixed up some green with this tint back here, and this one right here. A painting with two hands really, really helps in the fuzz layer. Bye-bye, Tanya. Because um, it helps me to paint messier. Now, this tint way down here is going to be white, so I'm going to lighten that. Um, trying to decide what color, what colors, there we go, kind of an aqua, kind of, oh yeah, 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 that's nice. Same thing up here, I really like that aqua, touch of aqua, in fact, I like it so much, let's find somewhere to do it down here. Now, once again, um, I'm doing, so to speak, too much fuzz, right? It's like it's going overboard. Correct. Not to worry. Not to worry <laughs> because I still have the final edit to go yet. Which is the slowest of all my of all the steps, but uh, I will the, the final edit. It tends to be opaque and more hard edges. Um, so again, I don't worry too much. I'm learning not to worry in the in the fuzz layer. Like, oh man, you've done too much fuzz. Yeah, don't worry about it. You can come back. You will defuzzify it. <laughs> Okay, is there anything else I need to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a white tent, a couple of white tents. That means I'm going to move them in a whiteward direction. <laughs> I'm not going to paint them white. I will do that in the final layer. But I'm definitely going to lighten it up right here. And that's too light. be able to do is the final edit layer. I want to be able to do as little as I can. I want to have as much of the work done. Partly because of doing the work in this way I'm doing it right now is so fast as you can see uh, compared to say the way it's going to be when I come down to the last layer is very slow, careful, and meticulous. That means slow. Uh, well, what oh, fun! Are you working out over here? Um, no, actually, I just got done having my first practice with my co-ed team. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, fun. So Where did soccer happen? Um, it was on uh, Creedmoor Road. And okay, then you just came here for Yeah, I was like, yeah, because I was like, I haven't had, I actually haven't put anything in my stomach this morning. So I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how's it going? What oh, fun. Good. Fun. So what are you doing this fall? I'm actually going to Wheat Tech for a semester and then yeah. I'm transferring in the spring to Western Carolina. So I can major forensics. Really? Yeah. Forensics? Yeah, I'm kind of into it. So. You're going to catch dead people? Yeah, oh, wait, wait. well, that's more like, well, it's not like evidence, but anthropologists, you know, like, some bones and stuff like really? that. Really? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, Way to I was go. like, is that dead? I was yeah. like, ah, fun. I think that is. Fun. This is so nice. Thank you. Have, like, you. a little shade. Yeah, oh, man. It would be hot. Die without the shade. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How's your, uh, it looks really good. How's your, um, Thank you. your art, like, your art going on? Stuff. Yeah, it is. Yep. Good to see you. So when you, oh, so you're gonna go to Western right in a year maybe? Oh uh, no, I'm going into the spring. The spring. Like, oh okay. Coming into, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I'm going to Wake Tech for a semester. So you're gonna live far away. Yeah, for like five hours away. Yeah. That's longer than my sister was. When she yeah, was that's right. Watching. That's right. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually excited because I'm the last yeah. one. Yeah, so you'll do great. Yeah, thank you. You'll I'm, be great. I'm excited. And if, is soccer your main thing now? Yeah. Are y'all done with cross country? I am going cross country now. My senior year was last year. Yeah. So I just saw my friends have. I'm sorry, I never got to see you run. I really, it's really cool. wanted to. It's okay. Um, well, it would have been fun. I know. Um, what's it called? My um, I just saw my friends post on social media their last first like conference race or whatever, and I was like, oh my goodness, that makes wow. me really sad. Like, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, you're painting North Hills. <laughs> I like yeah, it. Yeah, I am. Yeah, that's what I'm, I am painting, North Hills. Definitely. I really do like it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, you look really good. Yeah. This is really exciting. Oh, thanks, Maggie. Good to see you. I feel like I've recognized it. So, have you, like, made any bigger projects lately? Not, no. Not, you just not really. Like, weddings. You know, I've done quite a few weddings really? and traveled. Been in Michigan and, and really? uh, Memphis and New Jersey in the last really? month. Yeah. Because I know, I remember you making all these big projects. Yes, right, right, right. Like that. I'm like, what's going on? Yes. Oh my no, God. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that. No, I think it's cool what you're doing. I think it's good that you really like what you're doing. You're doing a really good job. Yeah. Yep. Why not phone? Yep. Because, um, Nancy, right? Yeah. How's she doing? <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time since I talked to you guys. It has. Uh, Where have you been? Where I've been, been you know, getting, I've been working actually lately at the Heritage Club now. Swim Club. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so I kind of work, like I work at the front desk and stuff, you know. Just, you know. Soccer <laughs> I have to get new cleats soon. It's kind of like going crazy. <laughs> Yeah, That's good. Nice seeing you. I'll good see to you see you. Later. Okay, I'll good see to you see you. Um, my figures when I when I'm painting figures in a painting, um, I very much play the what I call the the picture in the clouds game, right? Like when you're a kid, you lay down on the grass and look at the fluffy clouds and say, "Oh look, it looks exactly like blah blah blah." Okay, that is the game that I play. When I um, when I do my figures, I just make a mess, and little by little by little, they emerge into something um, that looks like a human being. But I try to let it. I try to let it happen slowly.
say for instance, let me zoom in here real quick. So this character right here, I just drew a head and realized he was looking down and then I said, oh yeah, that means his, the, he's, he's picking up, or arranging the fruit. So then I drew those two lines there to indicate um, an arm. So then I'll come back here and, um, and fuzz in an arm really quickly. See, so that, that character, that face, that, that figure right there just, just uh, came into focus, so to speak. Um, without me forcing it. Same thing here. I'm going to make these two arms come down there. So both of these characters are, you know, it's a farmer's market. So everybody's, you know, handling fruit and vegetables, right? You see that? So that just happened, again, accidentally. I, I, didn't, I didn't force that. All of a sudden, now, I just realized his uh, one leg is coming out this way. There we go. Make sense? Now this character, right, this person right here, I, I think it's a woman, maybe. Maybe a woman from the back. She's got big, light hair. And if so, then she'll be wearing shorts. So the, uh, by the way, I, it is true that the pencils for me really, really do help. Uh, especially with when I'm rendering characters, when I'm rendering figures, uh, because they're so definitive. Um, by the way, the farmer's market is about to close, much to my chagrin, I say. Uh, which means I had better take some pictures here. Real quick. camera is turning on. So here for the last little while, again with lots of happy interruptions by old friends, um, I'm going back and forth quite a bit between the fuzz layer and the pencils. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, it's working working fairly well. Now this lady right here, she 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 snapped into uh, into focus really early on because in fact there was a there was a woman standing there wearing a hat looking to our right so this is her hair back here with hand on hip and uh, and her other arm over a big satchel her legs continue to evolve somewhat let me come in here and do some some daylight between your legs and then some flesh tone over here. Likewise, this guy. <laughs> Speaking of friends showing up, my grandchildren just showed up with my wife. Well, look at you all, look so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at who got you all dressed up today. Wait, wait a minute, I need, to, I need to point this camera at you. Ah, what fun. So I'm getting, I'm all the way down to the last step. Nice. Which is the slowest step. But. Yeah. What fun. Oh, you all look so nice. You're all dressed up. We don't usually see everybody all dressed up at the same time. I changed myself. <laughs> you changed yourself? Whoa. That's amazing. What is this? Okay. Yeah, do. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. So this is for Kane? Yep. Yep. Are you recording? I am. Or broadcasting? 
as the case may be. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm all the way down to the last layer, last stage, which is the slowest stage. So I'll be here. I'm assuming once they all pack up. Oh, I need to take a picture. Hang on. I'm assuming once they all pack up, then I need to uh, get out of here. There's a number of shots with a regular camera. Now, let's go, much more important, let's go to a Pro HDR. There we go. Oh, wait for those people to get a little bit far away from me. Here we go. Pro HDR, it's the, that is the camera you want if you if you paint you paint on plein air you take pictures to add the to aid your process you want pro hdr i think it costs three dollars okay and, and it's time now for me to clean up my palette been a regular, I don't know what, family reunion. <laughs> I've seen friends. The last girl was our next door neighbor. <laughs> she says we, we don't see her very often. <laughs> uh, oh, next last one. And then, then of course was my grandchildren and, and, and my wife. That was fun. That was a fun surprise. Well, Mr. Dan Nelson is Joy Baker. <laughs> I hear your voice on the Monday morning Dude. calls. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, I've seen your travels. You. Look at you. Look at this. Isn't this yes. nice? Thank you. Thank you. As yep. always. <laughs> well, thank you. So, one of these yep. days I'm going to find one I can stop. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. I think that's clean enough. Okay. I declare myself officially officially down to the final layer. Light, opaque, highlights. Final edit. In this final edit, in this last stage, there are four places to start. The most traditional is the sky, the furthest away thing and move forward. Sky, start with the lightest, brightest, object and move up from there, move dark from there. Start with a focal point and move up from there. Or sometimes there's uh, some local, some thing that needs to be corrected color-wise. Well, now I'm taking care of that pretty much in the fuzz layer, so that doesn't happen as much anymore. But be that as it may, in this particular painting, the answer is very simple. What am I going to do first? The answer is the sky, because nothing else in this painting makes sense color-wise until I get that sky nailed down. So let's do it. Now, a large part of the charm 
of this um, complementary underpainting, the orange under the blue. It has to do with how much of the orange do you let show through. And it can show through two ways. One is you can apply the paint thinly enough that the orange literally shows through the translucent, that's like I've done just right there, that's shown through a translucent layer of blue. That's one of the ways that... Uh, that's one of the ways the orange shows through. The other way is you just, you, you miss a spot, so to speak. You, you skip a, a little bit and, and you, don't, you don't paint. So in, mostly in those two ways, the orange shows through. So I have to resist the temptation, of course, as you can see, I have to resist the temptation to turn off my brain and just go into autopilot and just paint blue. That would be a huge mistake. Huge, huge, huge. I can't state how strongly, I can't state strongly enough how much of a disaster that would be. Because I want these strokes that I'm doing right now, I want them to be interesting. The essence of good painting is making interesting marks. Okay? Going through a fair amount of um, titanium white here, folks. That's always what happens. This is my cheap paint. A two bringer. <laughs> yes, a size 11 foot. <laughs> Step on it. Trying to be careful to do a couple of things here. One is not make these edge. This building, as you can see, is the that's the furthest away object. It's a, the clouds, maybe it's the furthest away object in the painting. And as such, I probably want most of the the edges, the lines in it, to be soft. And again, that that goes against my natural fuss budget personality. Uh, I tend to be a little bit. OC, not OCD, I, I, I think I draw the line well before D, but I'm obsessive with Tulsa. I like things, I like things in order. And it's so easy for me to paint hard edges, so easy. Looking really hard, so see this, the soft, the fuzzy edge that I'm doing? around the edges of the building. That's what I'm talking about, I'm trying to maintain. Plus, I have to um, eliminate a certain amount of, of uh, pencil lines. Because, again, because it's over, my painting right now, as it is right now, is over pencil fine. <laughs> okay? It's, it's too much, too much pencil, too many, too many lines. So this is the point at which I tastefully use my judgment, say, hmm, do I want that pencil line or no? 
If it's yes, I leave it. If it's no, I take it away. Just that simple. Okay, I'm going to do something right here that I don't do very often, that is introduce a completely new color, so to speak, but it's subtle. I'm going to add a violet, purple violet to yeah. my brushes. Actually, it's black. This is this is to to um, indicate the lower side of these clouds. And again, the sky's the sky. The sun's coming from the left, of course. So the the shady side of the clouds is toward the right side of all these clouds. Um, again, for what it's worth, um, hang on just a second, let me see if I've got some, oh I do, good, 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 <laughs> I don't know if you've heard me give my little, uh, Soho, which is a cheap, 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 student grade paint, if you've heard me give my little Soho speech or not, first of all, the, the speech starts with, I do not like snobbery, now, every once in a while I, I become a snob, but I, I tell you in advance. <laughs> so I feel like that gives me some permission. <laughs> like I am a signature snob. I'm a snob about how people, I have opinions about how people should be signatures. I may be wrong, but I think I'm right. But um, Generally, it's just about time for me to get out of here, isn't it? Yeah, you can just move what, what, what time is there? It's officially over at noon. Yeah, technically it's over at 12. It's 12 now, so i got to start thinking. Oh, do you? Yep. Okay. So the, the, the main man. Okay, so... Um, but, uh, so so the snobs say never use student grade paint. Hey, girls. Are you on the line? Look at how big I am. Look at how big they are. Oh, my goodness. Hi. Are you 16? Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> how exciting. Wow. <coughs> this one? Yes. Um, it's about 10 o'clock. Okay. Is that fast? Yes. A little bit. It's pretty fast, yeah. A little bit. He always is. He had a thing at a church that he set up. He was a very good musician. He was from the country. And um, he could play the guitar, and he did this thing he could play the harmonica while he played the guitar. So, see how he's, he's got everything set up. That's like, awesome. you know, and now I have to move. I'll, I'll tell you what they help me with in a minute, but at the moment I don't know what. So what? I'm give you. I, I'll let you help me in a minute, but at the moment I don't okay. know what to tell you to do. So. I know, and we'll probably like drop the paint. <laughs> so you guys just get to watch. You guys just get to watch me set up. Yeah. So how much traveling are you doing these days? Oh, you 
Not so much this month. So this is part of the process you don't normally want. Paper 
cows flying away like a flag in the middle. Decades. 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 Almost, almost. Just in case any of you are wondering, where do you get an easel like this? <laughs> the answer is you build it. Well, actually, of course, you start in this case. Start with a pre. <laughs> and modify it heavily. Um, I don't. I don't own any so that I haven't modified heavily. I don't know how. I don't know how to be an artist. <laughs> Not build their own insult, but there you go. That's me. Uh, this box, of course, holds my supplies. But it also, of course, provides weight. Um, everything I'm, everything I'm putting on the easel, I'm putting it there on purpose. Uh, in order to weigh down. So I'm trying to see now if I'm in shade. I've got sun on my palette, which isn't great, but I can live with that. I need to be in the shade, and I think I am. And I, my painting needs to be in the shade. It is. In a little while, uh, the sun is going to go behind that building. That'll be give me a great break for a while. So I was right in the middle of painting the sky. I want to point out one other thing that could help help you. Uh, whenever you have to paint a, what I call a highly highly variegated light dark muffled, muffled, light dark, light dark, light dark. Maybe I can paint a highly variegated object. A face, a figure, clothing, fabric, foliage, grass, water, sky. Whenever you have to paint a thing that's light dark, light dark, light dark, mixed up, highly variegated. Um, there's a formula that can help I have, in fact, followed the formula precisely in the last few minutes while I have been doing the, uh, the sky. Hang on just a second. I need to put this back where it was. I didn't need to move it, so I didn't move it. One more piece of equipment. Hmm, I wonder. Hang on just a minute. Let me, let me check this out. I wonder if I could get this umbrella. Really nice umbrella here, made by um, Gorilla Painter. A plain air umbrella. Um, and it's got a stake to stick in the ground down there. I sure would love to have this up here like this. I have two things to uh, hold it in place. One is a big clamp, big strong clamp, and the other is a bungee cord. So let's see. This is experimentation here, big time. Oh yeah, that'll help a little bit. 
Oof. Okay, I'm tired. I want to sit down now. Okay, the formula for a highly variegated object is this. Medium dark light. Medium over the whole area. More or less. That's what I did when I did the when I did the blue. Just decided I didn't like that little bit of white here. Uh, medium over the whole area. Then dark. The purple, the dark side of the cloud, and finally, light. The light side of the cloud. Now, I would like it, if you can see that, I'm assuming you can. You can see how effective um, this, this process is before I even, before I even la add the last layer. Um, if this were a sunset sky, I could let it go. I would be done already, couldn't I? Because it's not sunset, but I, I, I'm gonna try to be very careful to allow as much of that orange to show through as I feel like I can stand, so to speak. I've mentioned this several times before, but I'll say it again. Um, I, <laughs> skies are, in a, a, clouds are hard for me to paint. But hold on, not for the reason that you think. I feel like hard, clouds are hard for me to paint because I'm such a sky freak. I like looking at skies. I enjoy taking pictures of skies. I, I pay so much attention to clouds that I can paint them really, really well. That is to say, realistically. I, I hear me. This is not a realistic painting. This is an abstract realism painting, which means the brush strokes have to be paramount, more important, more prominent than the object. So the hard part for me is to hold myself back, and I'm as serious as I can be, and try to re resist turning these, so to speak, into clouds. I have to make sure that they look, first of all, like brush strokes that, oh, accidentally happened to look sort of like clouds. And that requires a lot of discipline for me because, doggone it, I know how to paint clouds. It would be really easy, really easy to just hunker down and do realistic clouds. Um, but it would be a, a, an erroneous impulse, in my opinion. It would be a bad direction to take. So I'm trying to discipline myself to keep my brushes moving perhaps just a little faster than I can think <laughs> so I don't accidentally start slipping into tedious realism. Well, that's weird. I'm pretty close. I'm going to do another layer of slightly lighter white on top of that and then I should be ready to move on. Of course I want it to look like a sky. Of course I want it to look like clouds. Of course. But, and it's a big but. But, 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 but. It's more important that they look like interesting brush strokes than that they look like clouds. That is the essence of what I call abstract realism, what most people call impressionistic painting. David LaFell, famous artist in the New England area, New York, I think. David LaFell, I heard, use that term to describe his paintings years ago. And <clears throat> I realized that I had the same objective. So I've been, that's my name for my style of painting, is abstract realism. Which again, means that the brush strokes, the paint itself is paramount, more important than the image. Of course I want it to look like the image, of course. That goes without saying, that's the easy part. The hard part is doing the image without, without forcing it. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Without turning into a control freak. Let the paint be painterly. Let the brush make marks. Okay.
think I'm, I'm pretty close to done. I'm going to stop there and come back to it later if I so choose. Good idea to just not, not get carried away. Okay. So finally, 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 finally. Now, as people come by and look at my painting for the rest of the day, they're not going to see a big orange-pink sky and think, ooh, that's pretty. Instead, they're going to see this sky, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they'll still think it's quote-unquote pretty, but it's a lot more realistic than it was just a few minutes ago. Now, let's do some... highlights on this, this building. Hey, guy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> watch the paint dry. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're what you can hang out as long as you want. Hey man, I'm a crafter. I do this stuff. <laughs> paint all the time. <laughs> do you? No, I know you. I'm Dan. What's your name? I'm Kay. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Good to meet you. you too, man. Are you an artist? I am. What do you do? I used to actually draw. I used to paint a little bit. Basket. And now I actually build stuff like cosplay armor and stuff. Like oh, that. no kidding. Yes. Yeah, so, that's exactly right tell me about it tell me about it Thank you, Kay. Appreciate it. I do. Let's see if I can follow you. On Please something. do. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm broadcasting on YouTube right now. Absolutely. What's your last name? Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, in this final edit, um, I call it, now listen to this very carefully, I call it, I describe it as light, okay, almost everything I do, virtually everything I do is light values, has white paint in it, light opaque, and highlights. Um, but, a lot of what I call opaque actually isn't opaque, like so far, all the stuff that I put on the canvas in this final layer has actually been, if you want to get technical about it, it has been translucent, not opaque. So it's opaque paint, and it's kind of a play, applied sort of an opaque manner, uh, not strictly speaking. Strictly speaking, I'm being, I'm doing quite a bit of translucent. Um, my goal, in a sense, is to paint as little as possible in this final layer. If something doesn't need paint on it, then don't put paint on it. This is the one area, the one phase of the painting process where it's, I'm most in danger of overdoing it, of turning off my brain and painting uh, without my brain turned on. I'm painting like an automaton, painting like a robot. I just say, yeah, just paint, paint, paint this wall, man. Just paint that wall. It's like it's constantly fighting against that impulse. Um, very much of this final layer, in, in much of it, I am responding color-wise 
I'm responding to what's already on the canvas. I'm just lightening, highlighting, accentuating what's already there. Does that make sense? Most of the time, I'm not inventing something new, as they say, out of whole cloth. I don't know. I'm just responding to what's already on the canvas and bringing emphasis to some parts of it. Let me go back to my, um, I was, I, I, before I had to move, I started talking about uh, this paint. <laughs> this one tube of Soho raw umber. And I started by talking about how much I dislike snobbery. And, and when it comes to paint, the snob, the art, the art snob typically says something like this. Oh, they scoff and say, oh, I only use, I only use such and such brand. I only use and you know they mean I only use the best. Now the real the real paint snobs, they mix their own. Like good grief. That's a, anyway. And you're welcome to mix your own if you really want to. If you want to be a paint mixer or a painter, if you want to waste some of your painting time mixing paint, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Who am I to say? But the snobbery attitude is, and if you were as good as I was, you do this too. So um. You hear a lot of snobbery when it comes to um, paint brands. But I'm here to tell you, if you find a student brand, a student color that you like, don't let any snob rain on your parade. And I have found a color of student paint. Cheap low what's low pigment saturation low 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 pigment saturation and it is precisely because of that is why I like it so I, I discovered it by accident several months ago and I've been buying it ever since student grade raw umber for me it just happens to be accident accidentally happens to be the perfect color killer the bat the perfect color killer color <laughs> so I love it and the fact that it's low pigment is exactly what I want. Anyway, so kind of fun. Let's let's do. Uh, some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. watching you for a while? For a long while, let's be honest. Very long while. <laughs> um, I find myself in need of a little mental break. Plus I want to come back and look at some, I'm basically, I think I'm done down here, mostly. Uh, I, I need to walk away from this painting and come back and look at it with fresh eyes in a little while. So I'm going to take a quick little break right here. Go get some ice cream or lemonade or something. Who knows what? Maybe sick eating something healthy. And I'll be.
Amori Garcia Kirk. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed that comment earlier. I'm sure you sent that in a while ago. Yeah. Oh, no, you can leave it in my basket, please. Well, welcome back. Uh, had a nice little break. Hung out with the grandchildren just a few minutes. And uh, did a little bit of work while you were gone, not much. Mostly on these figures down here. Got just got some of the issues worked out, so I can actually have a strong feeling about you know which way they're all going, so to speak. <laughs> Once I know which way they're going, things get a lot easier. Okay. I'm going to zoom in here real tight because I want you to be able to see. Let's see, see if I can bring you in here. You're going to be in my way, but I'll try to live with it. Let me tell you a little bit why I like this technique. It continues to grow on me. Uh, again, um, I didn't learn this from anybody. It just has evolved under my own hand over the last 15 years. Uh, summer of 2004, 14 years summer of 2004 I told this story I won't tell it again but I made a very deliberate and, and very hard right turn in my painting career that's when I started this acrylics transparent acrylics that's a very important concept it's not just acrylics under oil it's transparent acrylics under oil that's what makes my my take technique my technique that's what makes that's what gives it the look that it has um and here's why i like it i'm i'm zooming in here so you can see all of this all of this shady area is underpainting underpainting acrylics right and and i hardly have to do anything to it just a little bit a matching color that is to say i mixed up a, a, a dull orange to basically match what's already here. Now I'm going to add some green to my dull orange to match this. A little bit of yellow as well. <clears throat> Why I like it is the superb interplay of colors and layers that you just can't achieve by painting with that you can't, <laughs> that you, that you can't, um, you can't achieve with a, with opaque paints. Um, it would be fair to say that the area in which my technique shows up and shows off the most is in the midtones. It's not the highlights. My highlights are just like everybody else's oil painters highlights it's not even so much in the darkest areas my dark areas are pretty much like everybody else's but it is in fact in the midtones which is what I'm working on right now where this my technique I'm really happy with it where it shows off where it shows up and shows off shows up and shows off Midtone stuff. Because in the midtone, so another area that would be an indication of this would be, um, hang on just a second, I need to make an adjustment to my phone here. Bye. Love you. Bye-bye. There we go. I had to brighten my... I should have done that earlier. It's a nice shot of my ear. Sorry. <laughs> nice old man ear. Um, this area down here, that's mid-tones. Not the light stuff, not the darkest stuff, but the mid-tones. Um, that's, that's what I like about this, this particular approach to painting is the magic that is achieved through this 
accidentally even, if you will, accidentally through this layers of transparent and translucent. That's the fuller description. It's layers that, of transparent and translucent layers of color. And I say that, of course, assuming you're going to be able to cipher out the difference between transparent and translucent. Evidently, a lot of people, that's sort of a, a fuzzy distinction in their mind. Until, maybe until they hear it said in one sentence, and they go, oh yeah, wait. Translucent, yeah, that's like glass, right? Trans, I mean, transparent, <laughs> I just said it wrong. Transparent, that's clear like glass, right? Translucent, that's like onion skin paper, right? Tracing paper, right. Got it. So it's the interplay between these two is what I think gives my paintings their charm. And you see it mostly in the mid-tone sections. I'm being, I'm being kind of technical here. I mean, I'm getting, you know. But again, just in case any of you want to try my technique, or I know many pe people are telling me all the time that they are trying it. I'm tickled to death that people are trying it. And and uh, I'm just explaining. So so what is it about this technique? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the question I just answered. And the answer is it's the mid-tones in particular, and it's the layers of... It is the layers of transparent and translucent layers creates the most fascinating patina. Um, I was showing one of my paintings to my monthly painters group not too many weeks ago. And uh, one of my recent cityscapes that you've seen me do if you've been watching me much. And, and somebody said, it looks like um, oh, now the words, the, the names got out of my mind. Batik. They said, it looks like Batik. And I said, yes. Great description. It does. It looks, and, and I take that as a compliment. I'm not trying to look like Batik. That's just the way it comes out. Um, but they were, they were reflecting the reality that my paintings, have, especially in the mid-tone area. So that's why I invite you to give it a try. I really do. I'm a big believer in this technique that I've stumbled upon. Now, I'll, I will tell you, as I've said before, I do think that sometimes my technique um, keeps me from getting into, or keeps me from winning, if you will, keeps me from getting into shows, competitions, because it's just a little too different. I, I, people judges don't know what to do with it it's like wow that's different and I have seriously considered here and there at times you know abandoning my technique so to speak because I get tired of being so weird so I do sometimes it's like oh maybe I should just paint like Kevin McPherson and be done with it <laughs> for those of you who know who Kevin McPherson is I like Kevin a lot I really do and of course, I like his artwork a lot. The only problem is there's too many people that paint or try to paint, want to paint, just like Kevin McPherson. Hi, that's a problem. Been a long time since I told this story. Let me let me tell it to you again. It, it's uh, it, it it happened to me about man uh, more than 15 years ago, I think, because it was before I started painting this way. Um, there is a, there's a nice gallery in town that will remain unnamed. One of one of our, I'll put it this way, one of our snob galleries. Every every town has one or two, and and some towns, Santa Fe, Scottsdale, Arizona, New York, <laughs> some some uh, Charleston, some some towns have a whole bunch of snob galleries. <laughs> that's all they are. It's all snob, and that's okay. I want to be in one of those snob galleries. That's the truth. Okay, so anyway, there were one of the snob galleries here in Raleigh, North Carolina. They had a sign, sandwich board sign outside the gallery, say "Best of North Carolina, all-time best painters of North Carolina." I was skeptical at first, 
and because I kind of went, yeah, right. And then I walked in and realized, oh, th they were serious. They were, they were, and what I mean is, they, they were, they, most of them were dead. <laughs> if you follow, if you follow me, <laughs> that was my original, my original complaint was like, oh come on. There's been a lot of artists go through here over the centuries. You really need to say you got the best one. Oh yeah, they did. They, they were trying. So most of them were dead. Okay, that's important to this story. And uh, I walked into the room in the gallery. I walked into the room where this show was taking place. And I glanced around the room the way you do when you walk into any room, especially at art gallery. I glanced around the room and took it all, everything in. First impressions in, in, a, in five seconds. And I don't remember if I audibly gasped or not. I cannot remember if I audibly gasped. <laughs> but inside, I gasped. Inside, I went, oh, because I recognized in a moment, I knew when all these paintings were done. Not, I don't mean every single one, but when the majority, I knew when the majority of this work was done. It was done in the um, late 60s to the mid 70s. Now, let, let me back up and say, okay? Sign out front says, best North Carolina artists of all time. Most of them are dead. <laughs> I walk in, it didn't say most of them are dead, it just said best. Turns out, a lot of most of them were dead. I walk in and gasp. Why did I gasp? I gasped at my own sense of perception, on my own awareness. Like, oh my goodness. All of these paintings were done in the late 60s to the mid 70s. I was astounded that I knew that in a glance. And I'm, I'm still, by the way, after 20 years later, I was right. I, I was right, they were done. Here's the, here's the lesson in that. Here's the question for all of us artist painters right now. Because see, I don't know about you, but I take that as a very, very cautionary tale. In 50 years, will people be able to look at our paintings and discern, tell when they were done? I hope not. Right? Why? Because if I'm doing paintings so much like everybody else, then in 50 years, people will be able to look back and say, oh yes, this man worked in the early 21st century. And I'm not being very authentic, am I? I'm being influenced by my peers. I'm being influenced by my culture. I'm being influenced by my fellow artists way more than I would like to admit. Now, of course, I hope that I'm not. I sincerely, sincerely, I hope that I am not doing any of those things. I hope I'm not being overly influenced by my peers. Um, but I fear that many of my fellow artists, in fact, are. So a few minutes ago I mentioned Kevin McPherson, who is a fabulous artist and, by the way, a delightful human being. I've been with him. Yeah, not with him. He doesn't know me. You know, I've watched him talk and perform a couple of times and I've watched his videos, love his videos and delightful, just a delightful self-effacing uh, eccentric genius the problem is <laughs> good, I'm glad you asked my friend, Stefan Youngblood black man Stefan Youngblood 
write this down for you. I can, I can Google it. Can you? Yeah. S-T-E-F-A-N. Okay. He's he, right here in Raleigh. Yeah. Okay, He's I a see. great guy. Super. Isn't that, isn't that great? That is great. <laughs> t-shirts, t-shirts and hats. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Did you see my hat, by the way? Can you see my hat? Here it is. There we go. Oh, there we go. Keep America grateful. I'm sorry, I've been off the camera. Keep me grateful. Is that cool or what? That is cool. I like it. Glad, glad that man just asked me. I get it. Anyway, so Kevin McPherson, great painter. Problem is, way too many people paint, want to paint, paint, just like him. And yes, I believe in 50 years, most people will be able to look at most of the, especially, and where this it hits the most, by the way, just for what it's worth, since I'm being a critic and a philosopher here, uh, most of this is in the world of plain air painting. And again, I pick up, I pick up the plain air paint, plain air magazine, and I drool probably just the same as you do. I look at all those paintings and go, oh man, oh man, oh man, those are good. Wow, those are good paintings. Wow, those are good paintings. You with me? So I'm not, I'm not scorning anybody, but I have this fear. <laughs> I have this hunch in the decades to come, it's going to look too much the same, which means somebody somewhere missed their creative calling. So in that regard, I'm happy that my paintings look weird. I know that all sound like a giant defense, but I, it, it, that goes in, in context with sometimes I, I feel like, man, maybe I should just paint like Kevin McPherson. And I think I come to my senses and go, no way, what are you talking about? Which begs the question, could I paint a well, no, not as well as him, necessarily. But I, could I paint in his approach, his technique? Absolutely. Absolutely. Could I emulate, imitate his style? Absolutely. And uh, that, that would be easy. I'm happy to say I don't paint in my particular manner because I am unable to paint in any other manner. Quite the contrary. Go to my website, danielsnark.com, and you can see a fairly wide variety of techniques and approaches. Okay, let me get my wits about me here. Make sure I'm not over-talking and underpainting. <laughs> I hate it when it happens. <laughs> Trying to mix up a medium, medium blue here for this. I think it's I, I think it's obvious. I hope it's obvious that I I, uh, I consider this farmers market scene to be um, a very colorful event. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. I'm. When I showed up this morning, started unpacking and walked around, said, "Woo, woo, color." Fun, 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 color. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of fun color here happening here. I hope. Um, I'm trying to mix up a a, a light midtone, light to midtone green here. Again, there's not much of this. You see this. Am I, am I focused right? Well, yeah, of this whole green triangle here, 
there's very little of it that I need to hit uh, with with the final layer of opaque green. A little bit around the edge, a little bit to diminish the pencil. You know, a little bit too much pencil on there. There, that's probably good enough. And then all the stuff that peeks through. It's the peeking through. <laughs> It is the peeking through that makes it so much visual fun. Um, let me let me analyze the, the painting process this way for you. Not just the painting process, but the looking at, observing, experiencing, consuming, that is to say the person who buys a painting and then looks at it. Hopefully, I say, I say hopefully. <laughs> Um, when someone buys a painting, they expect to be able to look at that painting for years and years and years, and if it's a good painting, they'll never get tired of looking at it, which is quite the wonder when you think about it, and because it doesn't change. It's not like TV, <laughs> right? It's not like the movies. It doesn't go through some kind of osmosis. No, nope. you look at it on Monday, it looks exactly the same on Tuesday. It looks exactly the same on Wednesday, etc., 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 etc. How can it be that a painting done by mere mortal, perhaps in as little as, like this, perhaps in as little as four or five hours, can hold the interest of not only one person, but a whole family of people that live in the house with the painting for decades to come. Okay, there's two ways to try to do, to try to capture that. One is to get out little tiny, 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 tiny control freak brushes and spend hours and hours and hours. This is a valid approach. This, I'm, I'm not criticizing it. This is one way to accomplish that. Spend hours and hours and hours and hours painting, painting, painting. Every little whisker on the cat, every little reflection on every hair follicle. Are you with me? Every little glint in the eye. All of a sudden we're painting a cat here. Don't ask me why. Right? So that in the years to come, People can see this stroke and then another stroke and then they're like, oh, you know what? I never noticed that that particular little stroke that the artist put on that uh, one whisker. Third whisker down from the top, half an inch from the end. See that one little glint of light? That the, are you with me? That's one way to do it. A very different way to do what I'm describing. That is, how do you, how do you maintain the interest of people looking at your painting for decades, 40 years? A very different approach is, in fact, not to get out the one-haired brush and stick out your tongue and paint the light side, the dark side, the color side, the broken color side, the broken value side of every cat whis whisker, <laughs> okay, is quite a contrary. Instead of doing that, here's what you do. You pick up a brush, thank you, you pick up a brush that has, instead of one hair, has um, a couple hundred hairs. You with me? So with every stroke, of one of these brushes, especially even a small one like this, let alone, you know, what I typically do most of my painting with, right? Hundreds of brushes, hundreds of hairs. Um, instead of painting with every, every brush stroke planned ahead, I allow the brush, the hundreds of hairs on the brush, to do things, uh, so to speak. Nice Thank you to do things with a mind of their own, so to speak. And I do it over and over and over again. I do layers and layers and layers of painting 
each layer then continues to show through the layers that are above it. So each layer doesn't obliterate the one underneath. Each layer plays, counterplays with the with the one underneath. So that by the time I'm finished five hours of painting, the painting has literally like hundred brushes, hundred hairs, multiple colors, multiple strokes, multiple layers. My painting has literally millions, millions of, if, if we use language, if we use a computer language, has millions of pixels. And that is in fact what is happening here. Millions and millions of micro points of color. That's what we want to do as artists, is paint in such a way that our, the painting process produces a nearly infinite number of, of uh, colors. Does that make sense? There's two, two ways to keep people's attention. One is to paint every every tiny micro speck part of the canvas, planned ahead, manipulated. The other is to let the brush be a brush, let the paint be a paint, let the brush and the paint interact with each other in a way that's not quite under your control. You sort of guide the process, but you don't control it. There you go. That's a good description of good painting, in my opinion. Good painting is you don't control the process, you just... Guide it. It's sort of like having children. <laughs> you don't control your children. <laughs> God help the people who think they are controlling their children. They're not. Um, they'll be. They'll eventually be, perhaps painfully, disavowed of that uh, illusion. <laughs> if they think they're controlling their kids, they're going to discover sooner or not, sooner or later, that they're not. But uh, so that's good painting. It's it's not a control. It's a gently guided and the more gently you can guide the process the more the painting itself can have a life of its own Whew, boy glad I got that out not interesting I've never I've never said all those words before that that reflects and that does reflect the way what I think about painting but I've never said it in that way before you paint in such a way that the brush and the paint interact with each other and produce things on the canvas that you didn't quite expect, that you didn't quite produce. You just cre produced the environment where those things can happen. Bob Ross's best line, happy little accidents, happy little accidents. It was 14 years ago when I, a, light, a light bulb came on and I realized that the best painting actually did happen as a result of happy accidents. While you were trying hard to do something else, that's when the best painting happened, when you were doing, so to speak, something else. Okay, I've been deep and philosophical long enough, probably too long for most of you. <laughs> Let's just get back to, so um, I'm, I'm close to finished. Down here, let's do some bits of light between some of these limbs again tr not trying to not trying to manipulate and control and force things to happen but instead creating an environment where things happy accidents can happen I think that's a good description of good painting. And I just want to say, if it, if it that sounds easy, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> it, it's it's not very easy. I don't think it's quite quite counterintuitive. Um. Between those, the, the two methods of painting, control freak versus loose, in my opinion, control freak is easy.
That's why most painters, like myself, say, I paint tight, I'd like to get looser. I had five students the other two nights ago in a class. And every one of them said the same thing. I paint tight, I'd like to get looser. Well, forgot this lady here. She has a, a satchel. That's what I call it. A satchel under her arm. Bev's coming up um, in, a, in a week. Yeah, next week, next Saturday. So I have to deliver those paintings today. And then I'm painting tonight again. I will broadcast tonight if, if I feel like I have the freedom to do so. I'm painting at a private party tonight. So the rules, of course, are slightly different for painting at a private party. I'll see if I feel comfortable broadcasting. If I do, I will. Uh, the, I was gonna say, the one thing I want to do is, is punch, come in here and punch some of this light before I, before I quit today. And then this, this lady needs some, um, there we go. Yeah, I like that. Um. She's wearing a red hat. Uh -huh. And I need to force myself to quit <laughs> because this is how you just keep going and get in trouble. But um, all of a sudden, I'm liking, uh, of course, the light that I've got in this woman and on top of this, and I want to do a little bit of the same here on this woman's shoulder. So I've got three women. I, well, this might be a man in the middle with a red shirt. That might be a man. Um, there we go. So I like the way they're popping. Just about, just about finished here. Yeah. And then I'm just about out of time, so it's a good time to be just about finished when I'm just about out of time. I have enjoyed this morning very much. Thank you for your company. I will look forward to reading your your chat comments and your comment comments uh, when I get home. We walked by it. Oh, it's right there. Is that fun? I hope that's fun for you. It certainly was fun for me. And I look forward to finishing this painting uh, at home in my studio. Um, I will almost certainly uh, do a, a glazes over the whole thing. Any chance that I can, any time that I can attack a painting a second time, a second day, this will all be dry. Um, I will very much look forward to uh, doing glazes over the whole thing. 
and all the colors will get so much richer when I do that. And of course, at the same time, I'll make any changes that I see necessary at that time. Thanks. Hey, guy. You know, every painting, I mean, let me finish while I'm, let me talk while I'm sort of finishing up. Um, especially those of you perhaps who are, are not artists, and you, you might not know this about what it's like to be an artist, but I think all the artists will identify with me. Every painting, to some degree, takes on a life of its own. Yes, I'm sure this looks like a Dan Nelson painting. It does. People tell me all the time, you know, I could tell from across the room that that was a Dan Nelson. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, yes. But every painting takes on a life of its own. It does. Especially, again, if you paint in my... Oh, what? <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to quit. Let me do some highlights on these fruit, uh, these peaches over here. Before I've got more over here, but let me do this. Um, every painting takes on a life of its own. And... Um, because there are so many variables that I'm working with. So many different things. I could go left, I could go right, I could go left far, I could go left left or right just a few inches. I could, I, I'm, I'm talking metaphorically here, I don't mean literal left or right. I could do this, I could do that, I could do slight, slightly different here and there and here and there and here and there. So as all this, all these uh, decisions, micro choices accumulate, um, the painting takes on a life of its own, it's that, it, by which I mean to say it's not quite exactly what you plan. It, it, it has a life of its own. And uh, sometimes you get late in the painting process like this and you go, hmm, well, hmm, well, hmm. <laughs> That's not exactly what I, I wanted. That's part of what gets, keeps you going, keeps you fired up to try another one, and another one, and another one, because you want to see what's going to happen the next time. I, I'm pretty happy with this painting, um, but it is definitely, as I've been saying, it has definitely taken on a life of its own. And um, there, that helps a lot. Makes it look like a farmer's market now. And. Uh, I look forward to finishing it later. Even the glazing process will will bring about some changes to it. Uh, I think it's a good composition. I'm very, I'm quite happy, quite happy. The, the horizon, perfect. Like the sky, like this building, like the the, the, the figures and so forth. Um, but it's it's interesting to me. Every painting is interesting. It's like, huh. I want to say, didn't see that coming. That's, that's the way it feels. Hmm. Ah, it's funny. Didn't see that coming. Okay. I've rattled on long enough. Thank you so much for your company. I appreciate it. Um, I will broadcast again this evening, if I can, while I'm painting at a rooftop patio party. <laughs> That'll be fun. Thanks for watching.